episode 72 of season two of the Launch Your Biz Now podcast, the podcast for all new and aspiring business owners. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show today. And I've got returning guest on the show today, Kelly Ann Ellen. So welcome back to the show. It is so great to have you here. And for anyone that maybe hasn't listened to your episode from last time, do you want to just give us a bit of your elevator pitch and let people know what it is that you do and how you've come about and where we're at? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. Uh, so my business is called Enchanted Kin. I help moms with young children to bring more connection and magic into their family's everyday life. I do this by offering an online course and community where they get the tools they need to instill connected, soulful parenting into their family rhythm in a way that's simple and engaging for kids. I teach magical and spiritual practices in a mindful way that's simple, fun and accessible. Mums will be able to discover the many benefits of bringing magic and intention into their homes. They'll be able to share these soulful rituals with their kids in a way that they will find fun. So uh, we do this in a way that's easy, even for the busiest mum, and it's nourishing along the way as well. Oh, um, I love it. Yep. So that's us. Um, so I'm just a busy mum, like probably many of your listeners are, and I desire a more connected and spiritual way of living and being in relationship with my children. So I'm raising two boys and have dragged my typically Australian husband along to the ride. And I deeply desire my children to have that knowing that as humans, we are all connected and that community and a deep connection to ourselves and each other and the universe is deeply important for our well-being. That's it. I love it. And that's what, of course, the business was built on is that idea of finding that connection and helping other people find their connection, which is such a beautiful reason to start a business. And so you did the Biz Builder course with us now called the Biz Builder course. This is going to confuse you doing this um, back with us in September. So this is still relatively new and it's all finding its feet, but we're getting you on today to talk about something a little different. We might mention a few things about the course, but what we wanted to talk about is something that we both have in common and something that's very important to both of us, but I think you just, you know, take it to the next level. And I think this is something that a lot of mums or a lot of parents think about and is important to us. And so I wanted to have a whole episode on this and really bring it to the forefront and talk to people about how they can um, consider this in their business. And that is intuitively, no, intentionally setting up a business around your children. So, you know, this is big. So where do we start? Um, what does it mean to intentionally set up a business and why is it important to do that? Yes, that's right. Where do we start? And we, well, for me, um, intentionally setting up a business starts with the why. And that's it. The why's in my home. It's my kids. I want to be a big part of their lives. It would be way easier and less risky just to go back to work, but that would mean school for Parker and daycare for Geordie. I don't really want to be working for someone else anymore. And I absolutely don't want Parker to be going to school and having a business and homeschooling, it brings so many challenges, but it also brings so much freedom. So intentionally setting up a business means setting up a business with goals that are aligned with my why. So that's a few things to me. It means flexible working hours. It means financial goals that work for our family and with the time I'm willing to spend working. Delivery methods that will allow me to primarily work online. And a big one is a topic that enhances the relationship I have with myself, my family, meaning the more deeply I embed myself and my family into this topic, the more my family actually benefits because it's all about connection and being very intentional with my working time because there isn't a whole lot of it. I love it. So, you know, I think every parent out there listening at the moment can relate to this because we just don't have the same hours in our day that we used to have pre-kids. And I was literally just saying to a mum a couple of days ago, God, we just need to take a moment to appreciate how much free time we had then when we thought we were busy because holy shit, if I knew 
how much time I actually had to achieve things back then. I, oh God, like it's amazing what you get done with young kids or with kids in general. Um, you just do what you can and, um, hope for the best most of the time. So we all sort of get this and, you know, it might be different things that people are looking for. You know, for you setting up a business intentionally as a listener, it might be as simple as getting to your kids' assemblies every week or, you know, picking your kids up from school or being the one to drop them off or whatever that might look like. Like this is different to everyone. But I think if you're listening to this podcast and you've been following along uh, with my journey, you know, this is something that I talk about and something that I am very intentional with what I do and what I call business with purpose, where we are setting up your business or my business or our businesses with purpose, with the end in mind, talking about, you know, setting it up to make sense for you. So like what Kelly touched on is, you know, having an online business that she can do from home in the hours that suits her, working the hours that she wants to work rather than letting the work dictate to her and being strong in that. Cause that's the other thing, hard thing is, you know, it's all good and well to say, yeah, we want to work 20 hours, but when it starts coming at us and um, we, you just get caught up in it, which I'm guilty of having happen. You just keep going. So, um, it's hard to find that balances. So what ways have you found work well for you or are working well for you to overcome those challenges and, sh and ensure you are setting up your business with intention? For me, it's trying to build some structure around when I can work whilst remaining flexible in the face of change. And in this start of the year, there's been a lot of change in my care options and it's been a real juggle. So the other big part of the puzzle for me is practicing a lot of acceptance, like, you know, the best laid plans, right? It's knowing when to keep pushing and when to give yourself permission to stop for a moment and to reset because mm. that's actually a productivity hack, not failing. So I didn't do this to be in overwhelm. That's not good for me or my kids. So. Yeah, there's a balance between the late nights and the breath, the stopping, the resetting. Yeah, I love that. And what challenges do you think are out there for us as business owners and also as parents? What are people coming up against? What are you hearing? Oh, it's time, right? It's such a precious resource. Um, when I'm not working, I'm hanging out with my kids at the creek, supporting them on their swim carnivals, playing board games. We don't want anything to get in the way of that. So whatever's important to you, you know, you want to, you want to put that at the forefront. Um, so if I can put time in when they go to bed and connect most days, I'm up for that. And I think that's what most people experience is that, that time, that push for time, um, issue. Oh, a hundred percent. And this is what definitely what I struggled with, especially when Harry was a newborn, newborn yeah. is I just felt like I had to keep trying to do it. And even when they were, he was awake, I was trying to do it and not being really productive at getting what I was trying to get done, done and not being present there with him because I was trying to do this at the same time. And I think for me, one of the best things that I sort of did was stop that and going, all right. When I'm here, when it's that time where I know I'm not going to be able to get any work done, say, you know, the afternoon, like hell hour, like or hours from like five to bedtime, like that's not going to be a time where I'm going to be able to achieve anything. And let's be okay with that and be really present with the time that I do have with the kids. So then if I do have to spend other time working, I'm not feeling guilty because I know that I have spent a few hours with them, you know, watching cartoons or writing or reading books or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I found that really helpful, but, um, yeah, the guilts are real. Guilts are real. So, um, do you get the bum guilts or are you finding you've got a pretty good balance on this? Oh, I still do. I mean, yeah. I'm still human. I don't know how to <laughs> avoid that altogether. <laughs> <Actually, great>. uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that surrender and acceptance to yep. what's going on and what season you're in. Um, that's, that's big. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think the benefits are to our children when we set up our businesses in this way? Mm, there's so many, but what I think the main ones are is first of all, they get inspired by 
adults who are taking the time to create something that lights them up, up like we're the most important adult and we're doing things that are nourishing for our soul. I think it's important for kids to see that work can be fulfilling and not drudgery. Um, the obvious one that kids get more time from us when it counts because the work is planned around events and family priorities so they don't miss out. And I think, you know, if the goal is not to just grow and grow and grow, we plan the business and this gets to be predetermined. So when it's intentional about prioritizing automation and outsourcing, so as the business matures, you know, you can do more of what you like overall. Um, and, but less overall is what I mean. So I actually help more people, be able to help more people, but actually work less. Mm. I, so I think they're the main benefits. I don't think so. And I think it's funny you said that about, you know, them seeing you enjoying your role. So, um, it's the start of the school year. So Charlie got sent home. One of those things that says, you know, what, what's my favorite color? What's my favorite foods at the moment? You know, all those sort of questions that you do and then save in a book. And one of them is what do you want to do when you grow up? And her answer was a podcast host. And I was just like, she just wants to have a podcast. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Also a show of the times, because when we were young, that was not coming up in any of our answers. I think mine was like vet and I don't know, or nurse, hairdresser, like times have changed guys. Kids are taking over this electronic world now. So um, yeah, very cool. But it, it's nice because I guess she's seen me doing it and sees me yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. And it is something that's a positive influence to her rather than going, oh, mum's going off to work and I'm, you know, I'm hating work and all that sort of stuff. So I've never considered that before, but I really, really like that. So, um, and it's nice for them to see their parents absolutely kicking it out there in the yeah. world as independent yeah. people. So, um, you can do it all. Like you're a perfect example of being a really present mum. And, you know, going out and doing this business and having this for you as well, which is so nice. So what has your business journey looked like so far with all of this in mind, Kel? Where are we at? What's it looking like? Oh, it's, it's been feeling so exciting, uh, nourishing. Uh, it's like that I want to, you know, get up or stay up and do. It's also very challenging. So it's not easy. It's just that I think it'll really be worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, I get to be me, to feed my creative soul, be the mom I want to be for my kids. And that's just now in the future, you know, there'll be profit from the business and my family will get to benefit from that too. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's how I'm feeling at the moment. So yeah, it's, it's good. That is so cool. And I think yours is it, like, it's such a you know, it's got a big reason behind it. Like, it, you know, it's a strong, compelling why when you are helping people form connections with their kids, which is what you're doing. And that's just so nice to, you know, sort of pull back the layers because that's what you're doing in your business. But this is also showing this is something that you're actually rolling out through your entire life. For you know, you, it's not just a, you know, setting aside this time. This is just intentionally how you set up your life. And now you're helping give people, a, you know, a couple of tools that they can use to help that do that as well, which is so cool. And I've really been enjoying doing this journey alongside you because it's really making me consider this for my family and the way that I'm setting up my business. So, um, it has been so helpful. So, um, your business is born around the idea of trying to enhance connections for mums and their kids. Why is it important these days that we have to actively focus on this? There's so many distractions. There are so many things competing for our attention. There's so much messed up stuff going on in the media and conventional society. So what will anchor our children in this world? With AI and the rise of virtual reality, there are even more risks to losing them to big promises of things that aren't real. So the premise is that we can be the anchor for them. We can teach them how to be an anchor for themselves. So if they are connected to you, connected to themselves, connected to mother earth and connected to the universe, then they will not be so likely to seek external validation. They will feel secure enough in themselves and with the tools we have given them, not just to blindly go along with whatever crazy stuff is in circulation in the mainstream. 
it's really a legacy we can leave them to take into their teen and adult lives. And hopefully they will choose these connected practices to be part of their children's lives too. So it's just something that I really missed and craved as a teenager. Like, you know, the external validation part was huge. So I don't want that for my kids. I want, I want something different. Uh, it's almost this intergenerational healing that you're doing. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it's very, very special, very important. Um, have you got any tips? Like if we're listening to this and we're going, wow, like, yep, I am hearing what you're saying. I feel all of this so deeply. I need to consider this. And it's still such a foreign concept for us to think about how we can actually do that. Have you got any tips that maybe we could look at doing to start doing this? Doesn't need to be something big, doesn't need to be crazy, but something we might be able to implement into our day or days that we could start considering it? Well, I can give you one um, special thing that I love doing in the morning with my boys. And I'm not, I'm not very um, big on having like these big structured routine. I mean, it, it doesn't work for me. Things fall off the wagon. Um, so this one is so little and so easy and my kids love it so much that, that it gets to be a, a constant for us. So it's one that brings us into our body and connects us to our heart. And it's about loving yourself first. So I put my hands together and we make the magic in our hands. And my kids are both doing this. Even my almost two-year-old has started doing this. It's so cute. And then and so we what we're doing now, we're rubbing our hands together. Right? Oh, if yeah. you're watching this on YouTube, but, you'll see this. If you're on audio, we're not you watching to Rub your hands together because the friction, I, you know, the friction will create that energy and create that magic. And then you lay your hands into the middle of your chest where your heart chakra is. And I tell my kids that they'll feel that energy filling up their own love cup so they can go about their day with their love cup full. Mm -hmm. So there's one, one little tip that, that helps us every day. I love that. And like, I'm just imagining like Charlotte's four at the moment. So we've got big emotion. There's lots of things playing out. And I think just when you can see that her starting to get overwhelmed, that'll be such a nice thing to do just to bring her back, take her out of that space, just give her something to focus on why she can help to control those from emotions and, you know, express them in a way that's, um, less hard to deal with than losing it in a tip tantrum or something along the yeah. way. Well, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's very physical. So little kids yeah. get it. They yeah. get it and they're intuitive beings. So they also feel it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think because you can, like when you're rubbing your hands here, that you can feel that heat and that energy getting created so yeah. it's, it's not even it's, abstract yeah that's it it's not it, like yeah it's starting to begin to get them to understand these different concepts that we're talking about um you know in the spiritual world or whatever you know just that mental sort of space um in a way that a four-year-old or a three-year-old or whatever age can understand so i think that is such a beautiful thing to um do and i have been loving seeing some of your activities come through and the different ideas you've got. So on that thought, what have you got coming up in your business? Well, I really just, I can't wait until the course is finished to get some stuff out to you guys. Right. Yeah. So I've, I've created something to offer in the meantime. It's called the pink love bubble experience. It's a masterclass for harnessing the protective energy of love. And because I like to put a bit of magic into everything I do, I'm running it in the form of a spiritual circle. So this format is super nourishing. You get to experience the concept in multiple ways, including going through a guided meditation that I channeled. So the learning is embedded into your life in a multi-sensory and multi-dimensional way. So in simple terms, it means the learning will stick with you better. Uh, so you can more easily bring it into your own family. Um, the online one is Friday the 31st of March and I'm doing an in-person one if you are lucky enough to be in Townsville on Saturday the 1st of April and you can register for that on my website. And I also have a free resource 
It's called Connect with Magic Now. It's a perfect place to start to learn what magic is and how to get started using magic and intention easily and instantly to bring more connection to your family's life. Oh, I love both of them. And I've seen this guide and I've used a few things and I love it. So I'll, of course, put them into the show notes for everybody to check out. And I wish I was in Townsville to do it with you in person. That would be brilliant, but I might have to jump into the online one for that one. But that's okay. I love a good online experience anyway, because what's better than sitting in your pajamas in a place that you're comfortable at? And being fully immersed. And when you've got kids and, you know, the alternative is fighting babysitters and all this other stuff, I'm here for it. I honestly, I put out an email newsletter the other day that said, if I have to get up and go to an appointment, it better be bloody important. (laughs) Um, Yeah. For parents, online is the go. So um, now it would be remiss of me if I didn't bring up and talk about your experience with the course, because I know a lot of the listeners are potentially considering doing the Biz Builder course or starting their businesses. So I think they would get a lot out of your feedback. So what was the problems you were having when it came to setting up a business before you discovered the Biz Builder course? Where were you at? Well, I literally had no idea where to start. I knew some of the elements, but I, I didn't know what to do first. It was yeah. super overwhelming. Uh, so with the course, it gave me clarity. It gave me accountability because I was, I was doing it along with a live program and a cohort. And, you know, most importantly, I knew I'd be using my time intentionally. Absolutely. And I love that I had a um, session with the new cohort um, today and we were talking about exactly that when you know when you're doing something for the first time it's business and there's all these steps you need to do like you know from knowing to what to do for your marketing to your logo to you know what insurances you need for your business like all of these how to set up a website what a privacy policy is for you like it's just endless all of the things that you just expected to know so you know, the idea of the Biz Builder course is we've just taken the stuff that you need to know, put it into a course, giving you a step-by-step guide that you walk through and walk out the other end with a business. So that is cool. And um, I think that's fun. So what was the process like going through the course for you? Well, it was so good to be supported through it. The teaching was great, but the support really made it. So being able to ask questions about anything that's coming up, you know, in real time, and getting actionable responses saved me so much time. It's it was invaluable. It was amazing. So it's fun. Love oh, it. that's love lovely. It. lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, what was different about the Biz Builder? Was there any other solutions you looked for when you were starting out? What made you go with this? Yeah, so it was just so more succinct than anything else. I was reading some of the course outlines and yawning, so that's not a good sign. And it. I didn't see how they'd actually take me from where I was to having a business. I just, I just didn't see it. And that's why, that's why I chose yours, Sarah. (laughs) And we do try to make it practical. Like, you know, it's all good and well to know the theory behind business, but you're not going out to go, you know, teach businesses. You just want to start. So you want to know the action steps and put it in place. And that's so, all, yeah, no yeah, unnecessary. You don't need to know the, you know, it's like, you know, if you're changing a tire, you don't need to know why the tire was created and how a tire works and, you know, how that all works within your car. You don't need that. You just need to change the tire. So um, if you've got a business, consider that with what you are offering is, are you trying to teach everything or do you need to pull it back and teach only what you need to teach to get somebody to the results? So, um, yeah. So take us to the moment you realized that the Biz Builder course was helping to work or working to help you set up a business. Was there a bit of an aha moment or was it, a, you know, just a progression or what did this look like? When, when it made things that I was feeling scared and overwhelmed about make sense and feel doable. So one thing I was getting really caught up in was the branding and the course convinced me not to blow my money on that right now and how to get something that will serve me and my business just fine as it's growing. So it just made me have the confidence to actually get started. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that was like, you know what? I don't need all the things. I don't yeah. need 
all the things. Just need the stuff to the, getting the earn the dollars. Just get yeah. shit done. So that is good. So now we've sort of talked about where you're up to in the process at the moment, but what does life look for, like for you? What does life look like for you now after doing the course? Well, I feel like I really actually have a business and I'm so excited to learn, launch my first offering and I can't wait to hear how it changes other families' lives. I'm, I'm just, just so keen to um, share what I've learned with other people. I can't wait to, Kel. It has been such an honour walking beside you on this journey and it is such a special business. So again, Kel, where can people find you if they want to know more about what you are up to? Well, we've got the website, so that's enchantedkin.com and I'm on Insta, so that's underscore at enchantedkin and also making the videos on TikTok, so that's um, at enchantedkin. How's the TikTok going for you? It's good. I think it's fun. It's a bit of fun. Yeah. I think it's a crack. I, everyone I keep talking to is just like, just stick with it and I'm just... It's just learning something new for some things. Some, for some reason, I just sit, you know, like AI, all in, early adult, yeah. different tech things. For some reason, TikTok, I just have this ball. I just can't get past it. And I know I should. So one day, one day, I'm going to jump on there and see what you've been doing to inspire me. Because I know a few of you guys from the course have been doing some really cool things on TikTok and getting some great results. So um, lots of fun. But I'm going to chuck all of that in the show notes. Kel, thank you so much for joining me today. It has been so good to have you back on and hear about where you're up to. And we'll have to get you on in a year or so as this all yeah. develops and see where things are up to at each stage. Because, you know, it is a progression. It's all good and well to listen to somebody that's been in business for a couple of years talk about it. But the thing is, or well, the thing is that they forget all of these steps and these shifts and these changes you go through through business, like, you know, for the, where you are when you start to three months later, to six months later, nine months, 12 months later is all different. You have all different challenges, all different experiences. So it's nice to hear from somebody that's in the thick of it in the startup process and really enjoying it and doing something really special. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.